This week, I'm extremely excited to announce that the Kickstarter campaign for my original manga, Amaranth Angels, is now live on Kickstarter. In a future where humanity is expanding into space, Sainish is out with the Starfighter Pilot Prodigy, flying alongside her big sister and their close friend. However, following a sudden tragedy, Sai only wants to run as far from a cockpit as she can. Fate, however, has other ideas. You can read the entire prologue chapter, which details the events leading up to Sai's decision over on Webtoons for free, and many Patreon subscribers get to read ahead. If you enjoy Girls on Panzer, High School Fleet, and the military moe genre in general, you'll love this too. It's not funding on Kickstarter, so go check out the various reward tiers and add-ons. We've got alternate covers, acrylic standees, and several exciting premium tiers. Give the campaign a look and back it today. Now, onto the video. One of the many things Girls on Panzer excels at is character introductions. Especially in a show like this with a lot of characters that viewers need to remember, it's very important to establish them in a memorable way from the outset. We see this with the introduction of Miho in episode 1, and the introduction of the student council also in that episode, just to name a couple of examples. The show is also great at making the best use of its scenes. That is, having a scene serve multiple purposes. This is a great example. While you need to introduce these characters, you also want to just craft a plainly entertaining scene. Here we have that, though there is more to it than you might think. While it's a relatively simple matter to effectively and entertainingly introduce a single character, it's a different story when it comes to introducing multiple characters and an entire school Senshido team. It's a bit of a tall order. And yet, in the Enzio OVA, we're introduced to Anchovy, Carpaccio, Pepperoni, and the entire Enzio Senshido team. In just two minutes, we get a very memorable, nuanced, and frankly hilarious introduction to all of them, which also sets the tone of the OVA and Anzio as a school overall. Poor, poor World War II Italy, still being memed on decades later by your former allies. But we're here to look at this scene, not Anzio as a whole. And of course, character analyses for Anchovy, Carpaccio, and Pepperoni will be coming in the near future. Light spoilers ahead, so here's your one and only warning. A big part of what makes Anzio as a school and Anchovy as a character so fun and entertaining is their gap moe. As I understand the meaning, largely thanks to watching VTubers for the last few years, gap moe is when a character does something completely contradictory to what their usual habits, personality, character, or appearance dictates. In this scene, all of Anzio and Anchovy in particular are portrayed with a significant gap moe via the contradictory aspects of their personalities and mannerisms. As is only fitting, let's start and primarily focus on the Duce herself. While, as I mentioned, I'll be saving her full character analysis for another video, we get a nutshell version of her personality during this scene. Though it might not be at the moment you think. It comes much earlier on, after her line at the start of her speech, where she says what others are allegedly saying about Anzio. Her impression of it, that is. Carpaccio points out that it isn't what people actually said, and Pepperoni confidently states that it's what Anchovy's analysis of it was. To which Anchovy herself follows up, Yes, it's my imagination. Sources that I made it the fuck up. This predates that meme becoming popular, by the way. On my most recent rewatch, I laughed out loud at that. It really encapsulates so much. The semi-delusional nature of Duce Anchovy, and by extension, Enzio as a whole, plus their bit of inferiority complex. And then she immediately follows that up with, Don't believe every single rumor which has no source. I mean, it's just comedy gold, but played completely straight by basically everybody involved. This scene also switches from confidence to pessimism on a dime. And she'll be talking about how they won their last match and have skills. Next moment, her teammates assume they're screwed upon hearing the face again as she's zooming in the next round. Up, down, up, down. <laughs> Andrew is trying hard to stay in her Chuni Duce persona but you can see her facade crack a few times when she gets frustrated at her teammates not paying close enough attention. This little fake cough as she gets back into the confident persona is a great touch. And of course, the timing of her getting the rug pulled out completely from under her is the comedic icing on the cake. The grand speech, the pan down, the reveal of the tarp covered tank, as the music swells and reaches its climax, and then the food bill. Comedy like this isn't as easy to pull off as you might think, and this scene does it so perfectly. Anzio is always getting close to the goal, but tripping and falling right at the finish line. Off to the sides, of course, we're introduced to Anchovy's two sub-commanders, Carpaccio and Pepperoni, who are very different in almost every aspect. Where Carpaccio is graceful, soft-spoken, intelligent, and perceptive, Pepperoni is loud, a bit oafish in a cute way, and on the small brain side of the spectrum. Carpaccio, as we see here, is also perfectly happy to contradict Anchovy when she gets carried away with her exaggerations and imagination 
while Pepperoni dutifully agrees with and parrots whatever Hoduce says. In a way, these two represent different aspects of Anchovy's own personality, but that's again something to say for Anchovy's character analysis. And of course, as we see in a brief moment in this scene, Anchovy pays more attention to Pepperoni's yes-manning here, which fits her mini Mussolini persona, and the gradual buildup of her irritation, punctuated by her hitting her hand with her riding crop, to her sobbing of her foot as she yells at her team, says a lot without needing to be super in your face about it. Last but not least, we have the rest of Ancio's Senshido team. And, just like the saying of how a streamer's audience is a reflection of the streamer, they are, at least in part, a reflection of their commander. Very enthusiastic and driven, and they have some measure of intelligence, but they also have small brain moments. Like we see here with them switching on a dime between being confident, angry, or just completely just giving up. The rest of the team is also immediately shown sort of as Anchovy's foil, contrasting with her dedication to Senshiro, while their priority is Anzio's great Italian food. This all, of course, sets up very well what sort of team this is, and how things are going to go wrong for them in their match. They had a good plan, a commander who's more skilled than she gets credit for, and plenty of enthusiasm, but they lack the ability to combine that with sustained cleverness to avoid boneheaded moves like we see later, and getting caught up in things to make wiser choices in the moment. Easily led, and easily riled up. They also could use some more powerful tanks, let's be honest. Considering that this OVA was released after the rest of Season 1, meaning that the outcome of the battle was a foregone conclusion, it allowed the creative team to have fun essentially foreshadowing the entire battle right here, since the outcome wasn't a spoiler at that point. We also need to give credit to the camera work in this scene, when it comes to conveying these conflicting aspects of Anzio and Anchovy. We start with this grand cinematic pan down over the pretty architecture to our confident Duce as their school theme, which really might also be a bit of a meme, plays. Only for the contradictions and then the gap moe to come into play. They try their best, but they're really kind of hopeless. However, at the scene's end, we also see that, while she is a bit exasperated at the task of hurting the cats that are her Senshiro team, Anchovy isn't upset at them being honest with themselves, which gives us a nice hint at the very wholesome, friendly personality underneath her Duce act. It's just such a perfect introduction to the new characters and school while also being a genuinely hilarious and entertaining scene on its own, completely independent of its primary purpose of character introductions. Every little moment, every little gesture does something to elevate the scene and make it a true highlight of the OVA. And this is only the first scene of it. If you enjoyed this video and like to support me at what I do here, the best way to do that right now is to go back the Amaranth Angels Kickstarter, my single biggest creative project yet. You'll be getting a great original manga in return, one which I hope will be a worthy addition to the military moe genre we all enjoy so much. There will be some cool new reveals and potentially some new add-on options added over the course of the campaign, so make sure to watch the space. And of course, if you have any thoughts on this video or just anything Girls on Pans related you'd like me to talk about, definitely share them below in the comments section. I love to hear them, and I do my best to read and eventually respond to all the comments. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future uploads. Also, as a reminder, I'll be streaming this Saturday for the first time in a while to celebrate both passing the 2,000 subscriber milestone and the launch of the Amaranth Angels Kickstarter campaign. So make sure to be there for that. That's all for now, so until next time.